The history of apple growing in Gray County begins with the earliest pioneers. Nearly every homestead featured a few fruit trees. In the Meaford Thornbury area, settlers discovered the moderating influence of Georgian Bay on one side and the Blue Mountains on the other made for exceptional fruit growing conditions. When the first settlers planted apples up here, they were just amazed at the production they got off those trees. And as there was more demand for the fruit locally, they got bigger and bigger and bigger. And before long, they had commercial orchards to service the local area with quality apples. The development of the early apple industry was steady, with 465 acres of orchard in the Meaford area in 1871. Just 10 years later, there were 1,110 acres in production. In the early days, packing houses were located next to rail lines in apple growing communities, and barrels of apples were shipped north by steamship. There had been in the past uh, many interesting varieties growing up here. Uh, you know, Northwest Greenings and Kings and Cranberries and, and older varieties, Greenings, that you don't see very much anymore. As taste changed, as people wanted better quality, different varieties slowly took over. Macintosh has been a main variety up here for years, you know, and uh, Ida Red was a big variety, Northern Spy, uh, Cortland, then Spartan and Empire. By 1931, there were 1,590 acres in production in the Beaver Valley. Meaford, the Beaver Valley and Collingwood is the largest apple growing area in Ontario. Why the apple industry was so strong uh, back 50 years ago, because you were 15 years putting an orchard into getting it before it would bear. You were planting an orchard, it was almost you needed two lifetimes. So you were really hoping on uh, your son or daughter or somebody taking over the farm because it, because it was such a long term getting into production. For many farmers, apples became a family affair. Near Clarksburg, the Ardell family has been in the business for generations. Uh, we started farming in about 98 years ago, 1920 in this area. Originally more mixed farming and then as the years went on, focused more on fruit production in the early 70s and then Dad really focused it in the early 80s. It's a familiar story. Grandma Lamb's fruit stand on Highway 26 in Meaford is a popular destination year round. Grace Lamb is not the first Grandma Lamb. It's the fifth generation and Grandma Lamb Sr. was the one the place was named after, but I'm the Grandma Lamb of today. She started the apple orchard, but I started the pies. The actual business of growing an apple went unchanged for more than a century. A combination of science, technology and common sense, orchard preparation typically began with late winter pruning. In the springtime, the region comes to life with apple blossoms. Each blossom will form an apple if it's pollinated. Commercial beehives are moved into orchards to make sure this happens. Each hive will produce about 30 pounds of honey in two weeks. In the past, orchards would be pruned again in August to allow sunlight to reach apples growing inside the canopy. September is harvest time. An apple will bruise more easily than an egg breaks, so great care is taken picking the ripe fruit. As bins are filled, they go to one of two places, either to the processing plant for a speedy delivery to the consumer, or into cold storage, where they can be kept for up to a year and still taste like they've just come off the tree. In the mid-1990s, the century-old traditional methods of apple growing underwent a significant upheaval. There was an exodus from the industry, and what happened there was it uh, cost a lot of money to grow apples, uh, weren't making a lot of money, great competition coming in from offshore. Some of the growers, as they got older, encouraged sons and daughters to perhaps do something else and not grow apples. The future didn't look all that rosy in some respects. In the year that I remember the most was 1998. The uh, meaning density orchards were coming in uh, into full production at that time. Uh, people that hadn't caught or kept up uh, were really in problems and it just came to a point in time where you either made the change or you had to exit the industry. A new kind of apple growing became the standard in orchards around Georgian Bay. The traditional dwarf tree orchard with 100 to 150 trees per acre 
gave way to something completely different. Planting has moved to the newer, it's called the higher density production system, uh, anywhere from really the 700 trees to the acre at a 14 foot spacing to upwards of 15 to 2,000 uh, trees per acre on a 10 foot spacing. These new trees grow on a trellis because the rootstock isn't strong enough to hold the fruit laden tree upright. A drip irrigation system solves the issue of summertime drought. We don't always get more production but we get a higher percent of quality fruit. In an older orchard um, if you got 35 or 40 bins per acre uh, 70 percent might be fancy quality and fancy being what we'd send onto the packing houses and onto the stores for uh, table fruit and then the other 30 percent would go for juice whereas now we'll be approaching closer to 95 percent fancy fruit. It's so more it's economical. Yeah, yeah, it's actually started to reinvigorate the Ontario apple industry for the first time we've seen more acres planted than, than, more, than coming out. Another major benefit to the high density growing method is that growers can finally address the most fickle aspect of the apple business, consumer taste. And the beauty of this system is within three years you can have a new variety producing. So with the consumer's taste changes, uh, you can all of a sudden, you know, change a block of orchard out pretty quick for a new, new variety that comes along. New growing methods aren't the only thing invigorating the apple industry in the Georgian Bay region. Ontario cider has taken the world by storm. There are more than half a dozen cideries in the region now, including Duxbury Cider, operated by James McIntosh. Well, I'm a bit of a Luddite, so I like to do things old school. Uh, so what we're trying to do is stick to traditional processes. So we are using uh, some European uh, yeast. Uh, uh, we're doing drier style ciders. So we use apples exclusively, uh, exclusively from Georgian Bay area. So Meaford, Thornbury, Clarksburg area. Uh, for one of our ciders, we do custom pressing. For another cider, we uh, buy the juice locally from the plant. Right now we have ciders available across the province in the LCBO. We also have ciders available at the uh, grocery stores that have licenses and we do bars and restaurants. The future looks bright for the apple producers of the Georgian Bay region. Change is inevitable and like most businesses, there's always a new idea waiting to be tried and tested. I do see uh, the number of growers decreasing, but the sizes of the farms increasing and that's the same as most business practices, just economics of scale. I think the cider market is probably going to start plateauing in the next few years here, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, the processors that are producing cider right now are going to start to define their market a little bit better and we're going to have higher quality ciders coming out from those players. The apple industry is constantly under change and I see it going to uh, more varieties, new flavors, new colors, new textures for the consumer to experience. And flavor-wise, a lot of exciting stuff out there. The consumer, believe it or not, wants a sweeter apple. We're moving in the direction of large, sweet apples. No matter what happens in the growing end of the business, it's clear that the apple is here to stay. It's a portable snack. You, you hold it in your hand. There's no special preparation. It's come off the tree. As it is, it's been stored carefully on your behalf. And uh, you just take it, you polish it on your shirt, you bite into it. You've got all the quality, the, the nutrients, the elements, the sugar that's in there, the fiber for your diet. And when you're all finished with the apple and all you have left is a core, it's biodegradable. So you don't have to worry about disposing of it. And that's been the biggest claim to fame is the portable snack aspect of apples.